Greetings, I'm your humble game master, and today I'm going to tell you why I believe Call of Cthulhu is the best introduction to the world of role-playing games. Now to many this might be a heretical statement. For most, I'm sure you'd believe that the best introduction to the world of role-playing games would be uh, the original, the first, the most popular, the holy of holies, that is Dungeons & Dragons. And sure, Dungeons & Dragons has some of its own sort of starter sets to get people into the hobby, including ones themed for uh, Stranger Things and Rick and Morty. But for me, I'd have to personally say that no, I don't actually believe this is the best introduction to the hobby. Now, a bit of a disclaimer. This is purely based on my opinion, uh, based on introducing people to the hobby that have very little familiarity with role-playing games or with the, the fantasy uh, genre. Um, this isn't going to work for everybody, even though my hyperbolic way of saying it may imply that I think it does. Now, for those of you who don't know, and I'd love to go into this in more detail in another video at some point, Call of Cthulhu from Chaosium is a long-running role-playing game based on the works of a troubled and somewhat controversial early 20th century author by the name of H.P. Lovecraft. His influence has been seen throughout the horror genre and can be seen in horror stories and movies alike. And Cthulhu himself has become very ubiquitous lately and has turned up in a lot of memes and cartoons and all sorts, showing that he has now got a little bit of mainstream appeal. Despite that, he is a controversial figure um, and a lot of the modern interpretations of the role playing game and his works try and find ways of challenging some of his uh, strange perspectives. They were quite strong even for the time. Uh, but the role playing game itself is set in our world, usually in the 1920s, although different time periods uh, can exist, like the Victorian time period or even a medieval version of the game. But the default is the 1920s and the players are investigators and they're looking into strange and uncanny events, unravelling strange occult mysteries that are linked to this pervasive um, cosmic horror that lurks beyond space and time and the strange cultists that worship these strange and dark powers. Now, since Lord of the Rings and Harry Potter became movies, fantasy has become a lot more mainstream, but when you're introducing people to role-playing and you're telling them it's a fantasy game, there's a lot of different flavours of fantasy which can be quite difficult to convey. Are you talking about the sweeping heroism of Lord of the Rings, or the brutal and bloody politics of Game of Thrones? Um, it's not always easy to break that down. And with Dungeons & Dragons, there are so many different versions of the same um, game and the same uh, so many different versions of what this fantasy is. Even if you took the most default assumptions about kicking indoors, killing monsters and taking treasure, it sounds like you're describing more like a video game or a board game, which can be fine. You can have a lot of fun playing it as a board game in that style. But if you want to introduce people into an immersive role playing game experience, I don't think Dungeons & Dragons is necessarily the easiest place to start because you have to describe what world you're setting in what the society's like, who the people are, what an elf or a dwarf is, it can be quite difficult to explain of those things, as well as the concepts of the rules. Conversely, people are familiar with this world, and even if they've not got any real knowledge of the 1920s, they can certainly imagine it, um, seeing still images from period costume dramas and that sort of thing. Uh, they're also, I imagine, familiar with the horror genre, very popular movie genre, very popular fiction genre, so it's not something that's very difficult to grasp. And they are familiar with procedural investigations. Um, crime investigation shows are very popular. So these things I don't think are as challenging to explain to people. If you told them you were going to do something in the 1920s involving investigating a murder or a mystery with some paranormal um, elements in it uh, and an overall horror theme, for me that sounds like it's a little bit easier to convey. The other thing is that you don't actually need to have any familiarity with the overarching Cthulhu mythos, um, the, the mythology and the background behind the setting to understand or play the game. In fact, I believe Call of Cthulhu is a better game if you have little or no experience of the supernatural horrors that are going on behind the background. It makes it a stronger game for it. So imagine this, you've got some friends round for a, a board game night or a dinner party or whatever your social class allows for and you crack out the Call of Cthulhu starter set, which in my opinion is the best starter set you can get as well, which helps with my uh, thesis. You don't mention goblins or wizards or anything like that. You ask them to picture a sleepy New England town, a, a creepy looking mansion on a windswept hill overlooking an, an ancient forest, uh, an eccentric uh, aristocrat who's just come back from a, a strange journey abroad, uh, and an invitation to a dinner party he's hosting at his mansion. You ask the players to come up with the sort of characters who'd be invited to that dinner party, 
uh, in the 1920s. Uh, a journalist, a, a private investigator, a wealthy heiress, a lawyer, a professor, a two-fisted archaeologist. You then use the streamlined character creation rules presented in the core rulebook or in the starter set to have them build those characters, or you can even use the pre-made characters if you prefer. You dim the lights, you crank up the old-timey jazz, and you tell them that this is a collaborative story of mystery and horror. You tell them that you're going to describe scenes and act out dialogues from various characters, and they're going to respond to those in a way that they believe their characters will. You tell them that if they've picked some skills for this character, then they'll help them succeed at those mysteries, perhaps saying that they'll automatically find clues. But if it's uncertain if they will unravel a clue using a skill, you'll roll some dice, and depending on that, they might succeed or fail. And before you know it, they're playing Call of Cthulhu. What's more, hopefully they're getting invested uh, in the, the story, in the experience. The rules hover somewhere in the background and you can bring them out and slowly introduce them if you need to. Or you could hand wave them entirely, but they're enjoying themselves investigating, unravelling something strange and uncanny going on. Feeling the dread and the horror that's building around them. And once they've figured out that you've tricked them into role playing, hopefully some of them, hopefully all of them, will want to go a little bit deeper into the experience. Maybe playing more Call of Cthulhu using more of the rules, or maybe a different game like Zweihander or Cyberpunk or Modern Age. At that point, you've got them invested in the idea of it, and you should find it in easier introducing them to other styles and other genres and even the rules of those games. But it all starts with Call of Cthulhu. Now, I know this won't work for every group, but I'm certain it'll work for a fair few. But I'd love to hear your thoughts on what you think the best introduction to role-playing games would be. Am I wrong to dismiss Dungeons & Dragons? Doesn't matter what the game is, as long as the game master can present it in an engaging and dynamic way. Let me know what you think. I'd love to hear your opinions. And until next time, stay safe, stay connected, and have a great game.